All right, this update has some huge enhancements, so hold on to your seats as we go through the design and engineering march update for Fusion 360. First on the docket is a piece of preview technology that we are calling Edit in Place. Make sure to turn it on in the Preview Features section on your preferences. We wanted to get this functionality in the hands of our users early to ensure we get feedback on the tools to meet your needs. Edit in Place will allow you to edit externally referenced components in the context of the top level assembly. Now, when we choose Edit in Place, the selected components becomes the focus as we edit in context of the larger assembly. In addition, the timeline changes to the timeline for the cabinet design. Now, we can project in other entities from other components to use to drive the underlying geometry of this cabinet. You can project in geometry, make relationships, and use driving dimensions and other sketch tools to drive this parametrically based on your design intent. Once you are done, you could hit the green checkbox in the top to return to the top level assembly. Now let's go make some changes to the original design. We can edit the frame and change the height of the frame. Notice nothing changes yet. To consume the changes to the rest of the assembly, we will have to return to the top level by hitting the green checkbox once more. And boom, the rest of the assembly updates parametrically to the correct size. When I save the top level assembly, all the changed subcomponents in top level assembly will version up to the correct version, just in case you need to revert back to an earlier version. All right, now let's switch gears to one of my favorite improvements in this update. Now I know we have had the 3D sketch option in the sketch palette for some time now, but there are some major improvements when this box is checked after this update. Now let's start with the line tool. Now you could jog easily down the X, Y, and Z axes while you hover in any of those directions. The line will snap to the global axes easily. Notice that the triad resets at the end of the line segment every time. Once you have some sketch lines on the screen, in 3D these can be dimensioned easily in their direction to quickly size this network. Now, this next one is cool, so pay close attention. As I'm drawing out these lines, I could stop and pivot the angle of my triad to lock it onto a plane at 45 degrees, then to continue to sketch out more lines. Now the team has done a great job to ensure that these sketch lines behave like traditional sketch lines, so you can add sketch relationships, dimensions, sketch fillets, and more to quickly start to define your sketch based on your design intent. Okay, here's an important tip as you start to get more comfortable with the sketch tools in Fusion 360. When you start a sketch, it always needs a 2D plane to just start the sketch. But now that you are in 3D sketch mode, you can switch between planes by clicking on the blue squares near the triad. This will enable you to quickly sketch in different planes within the same sketch. Now we could quickly sketch out a few more profiles in this single sketch. If you can't tell by my voice, I'm extremely excited that we are making great strides with our 3D sketching, but expect more to come soon. If you're a longtime Fusion 360 user, in this update you will notice the joint dialog box has been cleaned up. First, there are now two tabs, one for positioning components and the other for applying motion in your assembly. First, you will always need to select two components, just like before. In this case, we want to align this gear on this sheet metal component. The default joint is to lock it rigidly. Notice we could still flip the alignment and apply an offset if needed. We want to allow this gear to rotate, so we can now flip to the Motion tab and select a Revolute joint. So nothing too new so far, but now this is where it gets interesting. Let's invoke the joint command again. Fusion 360 has had an option called Between Two Faces, but it was nearly impossible to find unless you knew the secret clicks. The Between Two Faces option lets you select two faces and align the joint origin, well, you'll get it between the two selected faces. In this case, we are going to use that option to align this sliding sleeve in its housing. Okay, this final joint option is something brand new. I want to position this part in its vise, but the fillet makes it difficult to align right where I want my part. Now we could find the intersection between selected edges or the virtual sharp to position this part correctly. This has been a highly requested feature, so hats off to the development team for delivering something that would have required many sketches and clicks to produce. Now let's move on to the data panel. In this update, at the top of the data panel, you can switch between your various teams. 
In addition, you can join another team or create a brand new one if you are working with different organizations that need to collaborate independently. If you are the admin of your team, you can punch out to the admin panel as well. But everyone in a team will be able to view all the data associated in the team in any web browser on any device. One more subtle update that can easily be overlooked is a new icon in the project in the data panel. You can now hit the globe icon in the top right to view the associated data in a web browser. Now for the last one in this update, all the UT Spline enthusiasts out there are going to get excited. We've added a new command within the T-Splines environment called straighten. Well, you guessed it, it does exactly what you think it does. It straightens T-Spline vertices, but there are a few options that could be a little tricky. Notice, I selected these vertices, but they don't appear to be in a straight line. Well, that is because of the options. The default is to straighten the control box. So let's switch to control box mode, and you will see that they are in fact straight. Now let's switch to the surface points, and notice that this will actually straighten the selected vertices when in curved mode. Finally, you have the option to straighten to a selected line or drive parallel to a line or edge. This will give you a lot more control of your T-Spline's bodies to get cleaner accents in your design. Well, that's it for the design and engineering update. Make sure to check out the description for a link to all of the manufacturing goodies added in this update as well. And also give us a thumbs up and a subscribe and we will see you for the next Fusion 360 update.